So welcome to the visceral celebration of life. Here at Musia Machan, BMW Indonesia has just launched its most exclusive edition to date. What you're seeing behind us is the 8 in collaboration with Jeff Koons. And get a good look at it because there are only 99 units in the entire world and only one in Southeast Asia happens to be here in Indonesia at Musia Machan. And uh, you may have known from before that Jeff Koons is a world-renowned artist that has worked with BMW in the past on the 17th art car model, which you may remember as well was the M3 GT2. Well, he's back once again to put his artistic touches, this time on the M8501 Grand Coupe. Now, there are only 99 units in the entire world, so get a good look. And this is the only one in Southeast Asia. It's right here in Indonesia at Musia Machan. So it doesn't get more exclusive than this. So for more information, guys, don't forget you can follow at BMW underscore Indonesia. Or you can check out the website at www.bmw.co.id. And if you are using social media, please do give us a hashtag at BMW Indonesia and hashtag the 8 x Jeff Koons. All right, without any further ado, let's say hello to my panel of guests for today. Back once again, of course, Paramesh Divyanathan as uh, President, Director of BMW Group Indonesia. Welcome. How are you? Good, Paul. Great Good to have you. you. Right beside Paramesh is uh, Mbak Amalia Wiriono. She is the Head of Development here at Musia Machan. Hello. How are you? Hello. Good, Good. to see you again. Good um, you. And last but certainly not least, we have Agatha Carolina at the very end. She's the co-founder of co-founder of Vita Design Studio, the co-founder of Monstor, as well as the Lapan, which we will ask her about in a bit. Hi. Hi. Nice Good to, to see, see you. you. Thanks for joining us. All right, so um, I want to touch base with you guys uh, one at a time, first of all. So congratulations on this uh, latest you. project that we see behind us. It's certainly a work of art. It's amazing, and it's certainly eye-catching. Can you tell us a little bit about this collaboration? So we had this um, connection of Jeff Koons going back to 2010, as you mentioned, it's right. now with the 17 art car. Mm -hmm. uh, that collaboration was a once-off, uh, but obviously I think BMW and Jeff Koons had a really good chemistry together. And the discussion continued since then, and it, this is what we have seen today right now with this new edition uh, of an art car. It's a special one, 1990 is only coming, uh, right. being produced by Jeff Koons. Okay. And we're really proud that of the 99 around the world, only one uh, will become in Southeast Asia and Indonesia only of all these okay. places. And by the way, this uh, unit is still available. You guys can bid on this digitally. We will share all the details with you later on as well. In the meantime, hi, Mbak Amelia. Good to hi. see you again. How are you? Good. So, <laughs> by the way, this is the first time I've meant to come here so many times. There's been several events. I haven't had a chance, and I'm finally here. And it's amazing. It's very breathtaking, this Museum Machan. So, great. Congratulations. Welcome. On <laughs> So, uh, tell me a little bit about um, how you got started in the art world and a little bit about this most recent exhibition at Museum uh, Machan. Well, uh, I've been in the art industry for a while now, um, and my role here in Machan has started in maybe the beginning of the opening of this museum. Uh, and then this comes a special, a special collaboration with BMW. And um, again, because uh, Machan is a space that we provide access for public to see art. And we have a piece of art here. <laughs> Indeed. Um, and uh, finally, Agatha, thank you for joining us. You are an art aficionado and as well as a design connoisseur. She does it all, pretty much. So you're an architect, an interior designer, an entrepreneur. What have you been up to? I guess a lot, but uh, share a little bit about what you've been up to. Lately. Well, yeah, life has been quite exciting. Uh, I've been working on Bita Design Studio for almost a decade and working in like uh, architecture industry, also in fashion, like with Mama. Uh, like we joined Bright Spot before, one of the uh, early local brands, yeah. So it's been fun, like I always step into arts like quite often because of working in a cre creative field, I think. Yeah, so, and a lot of, a lot, a lot of, ha a lot of things happening, like especially after the pandemic is starting to get better. Mm -hmm. So I have many like new upcoming projects that will open soon and also, uh, and especially in fashion, like Jakarta Fashion Week now start again. So it's been fun, I think. Tell us a little bit about the Lapan. 
Mm, the Lapan is like a creative community that we created because it's based in Bintaro. Uh, a lot of like creative things happening in Bintaro with the Bintra, Bintaro Design District and all. Mm -hmm. So it's like a community consists of graphic designers, architects, interior designers, as well as fashion designers. So we all like started it and having like this uh, hidden gem because it's not located in a prime street. Right. So. Yeah, we're just having like a lot of workshops and helping like contributing to the surroundings, creating like a free library for people like we, we have like a school, a kindergarten right across our place, our compound. So we open up Buka Buku as one of our uh, contribution to the society to, to especially we are mostly our creative designers. So we open that library. Uh, focusing more on the creativity books and all so we we held workshops for them and also I think it's fun and it's growing too and very rewarding that's very cool anyway thank you for sharing um, let's just get right into the meat and potatoes because I can't I'm very distracted by the piece of art behind you there Paramesh can you tell us a little bit about I mean there's 99 units in the entire world not every country gets one so this one ended up here in Indonesia, the only one in Southeast Asia, in fact. Tell us a little bit more about the fact that BMW was able, in BMW Indonesia, was able to secure one for our country and why. What was the reasoning behind this? Um, I mean, first of all, BMW has always a very close collaboration and close chemistry with, with artists. Okay. Um, you know, going back to the famous BMW art cast from the 70s. Um, when I look at Southeast Asia, um, of course, I lived here for a number of years, uh, but travel extensively as well. I feel that there is a very, very strong following and understanding, a deep understanding for art in Indonesia. So when this car was available around the world, you know, I put up my hand and said, no, I need to have one coming here to Indonesia. Uh, when I looked at it, you know, the, the, and the Jeff Koons is so famous, right? Uh, but the fact that he's got also a very, very um, close feeling with BMW. He personally loves BMW. And he designed this car because he said, this is a car I've designed for myself. Right. So I think for an artist to do that for a car, um, that makes it really, really unique and special. And I thought, we have to bring it here. Right. And you know, where, where else to go except for uh, Machan? This is a perfect venue for that. And what is the, um, the, the tagline is new meaning of luxury for today. What's your take on that? Well, that's a very, very very, very complex question um, because there are different meanings. I mean, I think in the old days, uh, people used to say that luxury is about ostentation. It's about something which is expensive, something which is very, very, you know, um, uh, high flown and ostentatious. But nowadays, luxury means different things to different people. Yeah. Uh, it can mean something which is really, really unique to yourself, uh, but it can also mean luxury which is good for the world. So okay. it's got a different meaning in this, in this year nowadays compared to the old days when it's all about just about how much money you have and showing off your wealth. Um, speaking of, of luxury, I've never seen a museum like this in Indonesia. So Mbak Melia, I mean, this, this is such a great platform to be able to showcase this piece. Can you tell me a little bit about um, why is it that Museum Machan had this idea of this has to be a world standard or international standard museum? in order to showcase uh, art here in Indonesia. And why is that so important now? Um, yeah, uh, it's about time, actually. Um, because I think uh, the idea of this institution is about the whole art ecosystem. And again, to be available for the public to see this artwork. So not just the contemporary art, but also modern, and not just Indonesian, but also international art. So. Uh, Finally, we're able to do this. So, we, uh, and in the collection, there is a Jeff Koons. So to have this one special collaboration with BMW, it's just so fitting to be in the museum. Yeah, exactly. It's like a perfect marriage now. Yeah. Uh, I got that you've been an art connoisseur for quite a long time. Um, how did you see the lands, how do you see the landscape of art changing here in Indonesia? Because now people, and maybe it's just my, in my eyes, but people seem to, show more appreciation these days for art. And why do you think that has changed? Yeah, well, I agree with you. Like, with, by, when Bama opened like this museum, Machan, we had a discussion and I, told, I also told her that it's a very good start. So people can 
appreciate more about the art, not just on uh, the like local art, but but also opening their eyes to the international artists as well, mm -hmm. because most of the arts in Jakarta is not like a contemporary art, right? But now like they. Museum Machan, they have a lot of selections of like modern arts, contemporary arts, and from like international to local heroes like Agus Wage that just like showcased here. So I think people start to respect uh, more about the art and appreciate more by because I I mean like maybe uh, you, with the social media and everything, it's very easy to spread words and informations. Mm -hmm. So people got to really see, and now like in Indonesia has been like one of the most uh, people who played social media as well. So right. I think it's easier for them to to like absorb all the information as well as for the arts. Right. So yeah, it's been now, now that there's this higher demand for art, um, this thirst, if you will. Um, how do you decide what? is best for Museum Machan? For example, what goes into the selection process? <laughs> well, I think one to say that we are the first museum that are able to do international show. Because okay. uh, maybe back then, uh, as an art student, they would maybe only see art in, the, you know, in art books. Mm. Or anyone would be having to travel mm -hmm. a crossover to, to see you know, art pieces. And now it's available in Indonesia. And on, I, I think the key factor also is that this institution is also an access for education, especially for a young age. You know, they, they have to learn from somewhere. And right. we are providing that. Oh, right. Great point as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the artwork itself. Um, obviously, this car was selected. There was a reason why each art car was selected mm -hmm. with each artist. Can you tell me a little bit about the marriage between Jeff Koons and this particular, the eight, this particular BMW, as well as uh, perhaps explain a little bit about how the interior is, not just the exterior. Yeah. I think Jeff Koons is famous for um, amazing attention to detail. Okay. And a really core aspect of BMW's luxury is attention to, to detail itself. Um, so that, 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 that commonality is there. Um, in doing this car, uh, there are 11 colors on the exterior, and despite the fact that we've got all these amazing tools nowadays with technology and, and with, with IT uh, and software, um, he did it uh, by hand. He hand stenciled the artwork on it. 200 hours were spent preparing uh, how to paint it, and then it was done manually. So I think that's really amazing that, you know, that someone like that with all these uh, tools and software and technology uh, at, at disposal, decided to do it by hand. And at BMW Design, um, something similar happens as well. We, we, we might have it uh, designed on 3D with, with CAD software, mm -hmm. but when it comes to it in the end, there is still a full one-to-one -one life size K model which is produced. Because a lot of it has to be done by hand, and this is this tactility and connection between the hand and the eye, which can't be replaced with, by technology, actually. Okay. Yeah. What was the, the thinking behind the design of the interior? The interior, I think, um, has, is dominated by very strong bold colors, blue and red, okay. which comes out of the comic world, right? Actually, yeah. and in, that's also seen from the outside. You can see the word "pop" uh, and the graphic, um, you know, of the the wind and it shows speed and power. Right. And I mean, I talked about you know your own collection here, which is the Hulk uh, by Jeff Koons, mm -hmm. and I think that connection as well is not just about Jeff Koons, but the fact that both of these come from that same realm of pop art uh, and the comic world. I think that makes it really, really special. Yeah, when I was walking in here today, I felt like I was in a comic book, honestly. I saw the <laughs> yes. Hulk and I saw the car so, as well. Actually also, so we have, in, you know, since we opened, we have introduced Jeff Koon's work uh, to Indonesian. Right. And when it, this comes, so it's even more special. So people sort of have a taste of what is, or understanding of the artist. What has the feedback been like for Jeff Koon's, for Indonesians here? Some of, for some of us, it's the first time we're actually seeing his live work. Um, well, for those that, um, for the first time to see Jeff Koon's art pieces here in Indonesia, that's already one major factor. But now to see, you know, this collaboration with BMW is yeah. another level. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, definitely one you have to see in person as well. Yeah. Um, Agatha, you have a close connection with Jeff Koon's in the sense that I mean, you've been a big fan of his art. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about how far back this goes? 
Well, yeah, um, I was studying in London before and I went to the like his solo exhibition in, at White Cube. So the first time I saw Jeff Koons, I was like, okay, what's interesting about this guy? Because uh, he's very famous for the balloon, right? Yes, for that yeah. like dog balloon. The dog balloon, yeah. But when I read like his biography and ho- all of his concept behind and the thinking behind all the artworks, it's very interesting, I think, because it's not only playful, but the way that he challenges about the materials, that's what makes him really stand out, I, get, I think. Like the, the Hulk balloon, it looks like a balloon. It looks like it's like something not solid, but he created it and make it into like from like a solid material mm-hmm. and finish it like perfectly and with, with like crazy technique to somehow create it to look like a balloon. So. It's still very hard for me to believe that's a balloon. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. like, I'm sure we're going to insert the, the pictures for our, for our viewers. But I feel like, I know we're not allowed to get close to it, I feel like I need to touch it to know that it's not yeah. air inside, right? Yeah, is it right? real? Like, yeah, it looks very but, real. Like, when I experience it myself and look at, because it's a solo exhibition, so there are lots of his, his artworks, mm-hmm. not only about that, but more about like, the techniques that he created to make like a polished surface and all, I think that's really like what made yeah. him stand out. Yeah. yeah. So see, you're, you're the lucky one that are able to see, uh, you know, Jeff Kuhn's so artworks. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and so this is what we're trying to do is if you can't travel, then we bring it here. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so what are you, actually, let me get your take then. What's your take on the... Uh, on this collaboration with uh, yeah, well, BMW. as it said, I think it's like a rolling sculpture because he's very famous for the sculpture, Correct. as well as he's famous using like materials, techniques, and like finishes and all. Yeah. So I, I I think like the collaboration with big names like BMW really set that standard because it's not only about the art uh, like painted on the surface, but it's more about having the same value as brands. Right. And like, so uh, like just Paramus just said, like they have the uh, chemistry and so I think because they both have the same value that BMW is, is known for its like edginess and mm-hmm. it's as well as like comfort inside. So I think it's really like suitable for each other. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, hearing that Paramesh, obviously um, someone who is a, a fan of, of art or a fan of Jeff Koons, can make that connection when they see this. Mm. Obviously, um, th- we have one right now still available, by the way, in mm. Indonesia. And BMW has always made this relationship with customers, not just a customer BMW relationship, but making that connection with customers, just like one can connect with art as mm. well. Uh, how important is that for you and for BMW to continue to have customer experiences or customer kind of emotions shared with you so that you can make the connection and you know for BMW designs obviously that comes into play as well. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the core brand value of BMW is joy in the end. So joy uh, represents different things different people. It can be joy in driving the car uh, fast or it can be joy in looking at the car as well. Um, so the, the design of BMW is really really strong and iconic. I think we have one of the strongest design ethos in the whole car industry. Many aspects of the design of BMW. You look at one corner, but you know it's a BMW. So I think that that again uh, under, helps to really you know underline the point of we've got a close collaboration with art, and art is something which is you know easily appreciated by people all over the world. It's not something which is so ephemeral and so high end uh, because it means different things to different people in the end. Um, and you know with the art cars we've had since the 70s. We've continued that, not just in terms of displaying the art car, but in supporting art events all over the world. And I think uh, Mila has been to quite a few of these, uh, being able to sponsor the events around the world. And it enables us to reach out to the wider community as well, yeah. not just our own customers. Well, let's actually talk more about that because, as we know, the world is all about collaborations these days. You always see cross-collaborations and cross-brand collaborations. But what's unique about art is, and I want to get your take on this, Mamelia, is that... What, what's your take on um, art collaborations where an artist collaborates with a product or a brand where they actually are allowed to use their creativity to change things and to put their own uh, style on it? 
And what do you think that does to the art world itself? For example, to expand it to people that weren't that familiar with art to begin with or that particular artist, but now they do know it because it's in a product that they like or a brand that they use. I think collaboration is even more important nowadays, um, whether it's a car brand or clothing brands or any, anything. It's been even food. <laughs> and um, I think it's also um, expanding the audience by doing collaboration. But also, I think it has to have the connection. And I think, uh, again, as you mentioned, and you mentioned it also, that... Um, you know, Jeff Koons is also known as, I mean, his sculpture is so meticulous and it is so, and he is the most famous living artist uh, at the moment. And I think he will be uh, forever. And um, so collaboration, yeah, it's about um, expanding and um, crossing over different audience. It's just so important right now. Right. Would you, would you agree or disagree, Agatha, when people say, well, if an artist collaborates or something, then it just kind of waters down their work or it doesn't make it uh, as exclusive? What's your take on that? Well, I have to disagree. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I think it depends on like, what kind of collaboration and what is like, the background of it and what the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like, if they have like, the same value, it's better to go together. You can go right. far together, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, with collaboration, it expands the market. Like, maybe they have, like, this specific market for the art scene. But, like, with collaborating with BMW, for example, on this collaboration, it broadened the market, like, not only about the fan of, like, uh, car enthusiasts, but also the art enthusiasts, and they can be together and mm -hmm. enjoy things that they both appreciated, right? So, I think, like, it's really expand, like, the the enthusiasm and it yeah. creates like a significant impact on both sides yeah, if it's done like correctly which I think uh, it has to be seen through like from the process behind it and the purpose and all so yeah, yeah I think it's, it's a very like strong way to spread the words and expand like the markets. Right, that's an interesting perspective, you use the word value so I want to go back to Paramesh what are BMW's core values when you uh, look towards a collaboration with a particular artist or designer? I think it's more about, I mean, first of all, there has to be uh, some brand affinity and connection down there. But in the end, it should be having an end product, which is more than just the sum of its parts together. Okay. I think that is the chemistry that we look for. Um, so one plus one is not two, it's, it's more than two. Um, and that's what we look for in, in collaboration. Okay. Very, very often. Yeah. We've done this before, for example, um, I just checked uh, and reminded of that. Ten years ago, we collaborated with Didi Hedi Prasatio here. Okay. Um, he designed the 7 Series um, ten years ago. Right. Uh, and that was sold here in Indonesia. Um, he went to Munich and he specified a special paint uh, for the exterior. Uh, and he had a lot of uh, uh, you know, personal touches on the interior as well. Right down to, to, to a dog basket. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, special, special leather, special colors, special piping. Um, so that's one form of collaboration in the end. It's about understanding what his interpretation of what uh, luxury means for Indonesian customers and what we bring to the table. I think that was a really great, great collaboration. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love to see it. Um, let's look ahead a little bit, uh, starting with Lucia Machan. Um, Museum Machan has a plan to continue to build Indonesia's art ecology. Um, obviously, collaborations will help that because it will help broaden people's perspectives as well. Tell me what uh, Museum Machan has uh, planned ahead because we are heading into a new year very soon as well. Yeah, um, so we are an institution that we always focus on the education side. I think education is very important. Okay. And uh, so I think since we've opened, since 2017, we've brought in about more than 200,000 students to the museum, oh. which uh, allows them to see the art, learn about the art, and, um, and we hope to continue to do this. And, uh, and this is something that we will always focus and commit to do our public program. So we hope that we always have that support 
It's all about the kids, definitely. It's always, a, we believe in education. Yeah. Yes, yeah. very important. And actually, we are auctioning this uh, at a starting price of 9.098 billion. Mm -hmm. And the proceeds above that go to the Yayasan of the wow, yes. really? Museum so to for So continue the education program. Yes. That oh, we that's have. why we're yeah. doing it in a bidding format. So that's very cool. Maybe one day, one of these students who benefits from this could be one of the uh, next art car artists. Wow, exactly. You never know. Not just, or there the you next go. customer. There you, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, exactly. That would be amazing, <laughs> by the way. So, uh, would, can, do you, can you take a second to share the details as to how people can bid for this? So, there will be a website okay. that uh, people can go into, mm -hmm. uh, submit the bids. It starts uh, at 9.098 billion. Okay. Uh, and the proceeds above that will be will be donated. All right, and this will be ongoing until the event itself. Right? Yeah, it starts. Um, yeah, it ends on the sixth of November. Okay. We'll share details about the about the auction site later on. Right. You guys can just check out uh, the Instagram as well, right? Sure. At BMW yeah. underscore Indonesia. Absolutely. So, Agatha, I want to uh, go to you now. Can you share a little bit about? We I mentioned uh, Bita Design Studio. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the importance of design and the art world as well and how it can connect communities and as well as inspire other collaborations when it comes to art as well. Yeah, well, I mean, working in a creative field like Bita, I, like mostly we work on commercial projects like restaurants, bars, and also residential projects, cultural projects too. I always think that it's, it, we really need to find like a lot of inspirations because working in commercial like it keeps like changing right the right. trends and all so uh, arts I think arts is like uh, one way to really create and shape our taste on how we appreciate things so I mean like it's really connecting in a way uh, as in in the fashion industry too uh, so well by having like by by really getting to understand and and, and I mean like uh, appreciate art and just like uh, look through like museum or galleries, it opens up our uh, knowledge more on like uh, on 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 having like a an inspiration. I mean like inspiration to the to to, to just create like a sense of uh, I mean to get more sense of like the our artistic kind of approach. Mm -hmm. And for what else? Well, just in regards to the uh, how there will be more collaborations that can happen in the future. Because, yeah. I mean, in the design studio, I'm assuming you're churning out uh, potential future artists as well. Oh. And now that more and more people are collaborating, yeah. where do you see this going? I mean, how big can this thing okay. get? Well, I think it will go further. Like, for example, we just uh, designed like a resort in Sumba. And I work together with Deborah, she's from Isa Art, is one of the gallery in, in, in Jakarta too. Nice. And we've been working for all the artworks because we want to portray like Sumba with all the tradition and all. So she assigned like one of her artists from Isa Art and he created like this storytelling about Sumba from the ikat uh, patterns and all. Nice. I think it's very nice and it's a very creative collaboration with between us like the interior designer the architects Gary Fell from Bali and also the artists from Isa Art so we all created like this kind of like living because it's a villa complex as well as a hotels but in a way to showcase and to really expose about the beauty of Sumba in the form of arts right yeah i i totally think that uh, collaborations are the future we're going to continuing to see more and more uh, cross collaborations yeah. and they're getting more and more creative and it's uh, brands like BMW leading the way allowing the artists to be creative and having their own way as well and allow them to express themselves so um, yeah Ken, I'm very happy to be able to literally see this in person because they are so rare um, and the exhibition will be happening this Sunday as well very much looking forward to that but in the meantime I'd like to thank our panel for hanging out and chatting with us today Appreciate it, Mbak Malia, thank you so much. Thank Agatha, you. Thank, you. thank you. And as thank well, you. Paramesh, well, always Please come to Machan and view the this. car. Yes, Absolutely. please do. So it's going to be running exactly... <laughs> Until the 6th of November. Until the 6th of November. So guys, make sure you guys check this out and bring your cameras. All right, uh, that just about does it for us for this episode, episode 4 of Driving Life with BMW. Um, and guys, if you have the opportunity, please do check out the 8 in collaboration with Jeff Koons. And don't forget, 
please do follow the social media of BMW Indonesia at BMW underscore Indonesia. And make sure you check out the website, www.bmw.co.id. We have details as well to share as to how you can bid for this one and only unit in Southeast Asia. But in the meantime, we have a lot to get to in today's episode.